Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a little different than usual, since I just want to show you how to quickly fix the OLED model's 6 GHz Wi-Fi connection issues. As a brief background for the unfamiliar, the OLED model has trouble connecting to some 6 GHz networks, but not all of them. When affected, the deck will attempt to connect to a network and then repeatedly fail. This can even affect setting the entire deck up, which really sucks. The issue is that it'll completely fail to connect, and I'm not sure if anyone has an accurate list of the routers or access points that are affected. I personally haven't had any issues with my Unify network, and I wasn't even aware of this issue until very recently, so a huge thank you to Jack Hill on Discord, who both brought this to my attention and was willing to help me investigate and test solutions. Next, I want to make this clear, but this fix only applies to the OLED model of the Steam Deck. The LCD version does not have the same Wi-Fi chip, and it will not have the same issue as described here. As a final disclaimer before showing how to fix the issue, you'll need to be able to access the internet to do it, which means that if you're having issues with initial setup, you'll still either need to disable 6 GHz mode on your Wi-Fi, use a dock with an Ethernet connection, or use a separate Wi-Fi network until we can get it fixed. There are two ways to fix the issue. The easier way is to enable developer mode in your settings, enable advanced update channels, and set your Steam Deck to the main branch. This will get you the absolute latest code, but it can result in some things being broken or buggy, and at absolute worst might require a re-image of your OS drive if an update goes horribly wrong. The second option is pretty easy, but will require setting a sudo password and using the command line. I'll also quickly mention that this involves breaking out of SteamOS's read-only OS mode. Theoretically, there shouldn't be any issues with it, but it is possible that you'll have a slightly different or slightly more buggy experience than the curated code in the actual OS image. It also means that the commands, aside from setting your sudo password, will need to be run after each and every SteamOS update. With that out of the way, let's get into the fix itself. First, open up desktop mode and open up console, and then set a sudo password if you haven't already. If you use Cryo Utilities, then you'll have already set one, but if not, use the PISSWD command. It will ask you for a password, enter it in, and don't worry if it's not showing up, that's intentional for security. After you finish entering it, press the enter key. Enter the same password again, and then enter one last time. That's it you're now all set with a pseudo password. Now that we have it, we need to run a few more commands in console. One at a time, use the following commands. sudo steamos read only disable, sudo pacman key init, sudo pacman key populate arch linux, sudo pacman key populate hollow, sudo pacman syuu with a capital s that's important and sudo steamos read only enable if you're asked for your password just type in the one that you made earlier and let it do its thing after the commands are done reboot the deck and you shouldn't have the wi-fi connectivity issues anymore the process is essentially disabling the read-only OS partition of SteamOS, connecting to Arch Linux software repositories, and then updating your installed packages to the latest version. The good news here is that since the fix is already in the main branch and upstream code, this will be in future SteamOS versions without needing to do anything as the user. This just helps those that need it in the meantime. From here on, you're all set, but if you're interested in why this is happening or how I tracked it down, then the next section is for you. Let's start with how I tracked it down. Again, a huge shout out to Jack Hill on Discord for reaching out and letting me know this was an issue at all, and for working with me while I needed logs and testing done. They provided me with the following log snippet, which I broke down into the following. This is the firmware version. This tells me that it's trying to negotiate with the router or access point. This is telling me that the driver or firmware is crashing. This is saying that it's an IRQ error, which usually means something very low level went wrong. And this is telling me the actual error code. 
From there, I googled the name of the kernel module, ATH11K, and the error code. Then, I found this bug report, which proved that it was likely a kernel bug, but it could be firmware as well. It's a little hard to tell. From there, I found that Lenovo laptops seemed to be affected by this too, starting in around September of 2023. I found that there were numerous potential fixes in the kernel since that time, mostly by browsing the commits in the Linux Neptune repository, and that it could be fixed with the latest version of Linux Neptune. I also found that AMD GPU, the AMD GPU driver, could be at fault since it was cited in the Lenovo forums, but I couldn't find a commit that would have directly caused that, so jury's still out on that one. After some brief testing though, my suspicions were confirmed and it seems that there was a kernel regression around the publication date of SteamOS's current kernel build date. And the fix is to just use a newer version that has some slightly reworked network code. And thankfully that prevents the disconnect while using certain networks, at least in my testing. I can't be sure of the exact issue without being able to replicate consistently myself or on separate networks. But my best guess is that this is a complex interaction between at least the current version of Linux Neptune, the current ATH11K firmware version, and certain network handshakes. Regardless, I did find this fix to be simple and consistent enough that I felt I should share with the community at large. And that's all for this shorter video. Thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and super thanks donors for supporting me and allowing me to help the community as well. And of course, thank you all for watching, and have a great day.